left off on example seven. And we were working on solving this graphically. If you recall, I talked about solving it graphically means we had to make sure this equation is equal to zero, correct? That way we can plug it into the calculator. I know we talked about that. Um, in your class, we talked about the fact that um, the book is going to want you to make it equal to zero by putting everything on the left and having the zero on the right. So this square root was just one term. We were able to subtract it over, yes? Now, this right here, absolute value of 2x minus 1 minus 3 times the square root of x plus 6, don't do anything with it, okay? Whatever's in that absolute value stays as is. Don't try and change it. Don't try and put it together with anything else. It stays as is. Now, what we did work on is how to graph it in the calculator. And I showed you the long way to get absolute value, right? Which the long way is you can, go, you can always go in, most things can be found going in through the math menu. Going into the math menu, there's a bunch of stuff here. There's also menus over here. If you move one right to num, n-u-m. And then right there, the first thing is ABS, absolute value. So you hit that, and it gives you absolute value bars. Or, I'm going to clear that off, the shortcut that I like to use, because it's a shorter shortcut, is going alpha, and then using my F menus, which alpha F2. So alpha and the window button brings up this pop-up menu, and it has absolute value on it. So you can type in absolute value, 2x minus 1, arrow to the right to get out of it, and then it's minus 3, square root is second of the x squared button, x plus 6. Hands up for middle school football. There's no practice today, so if you need to call home, go to the office, or let us know. Thank you. Middle school football, no practice. Now, when you go to graph this, who knows what you last graphed? My suggestion is you do a zoom six. Now, also keep in mind, I talked about yesterday. Remember to turn your plots off, right? So I want plot one, two, and three to be off. So notice they're not they're no longer highlighted in black. If they are, go up. And remember you can just kind of turn them off and on by up there. So I'm gonna do a zoom six and I'm gonna graph it. And we have this V shape, right? This is about where I left off. Oh, that's because I have another equation turned on here that I didn't mean to have turned on. And, okay, it worked. Okay, now does your V look like my V? Without the extra parabola in mine. Okay, guys, where are my solutions? Did I get to this point yesterday? My solutions are what? X-intercepts, right? Okay, so you're trying to find your X-intercepts. To find your X-intercepts, where do we go? We're going for zeros, which is in the second and trace or calc menu. So remember, you go down to number two, zero. It's asking you questions, yes? So left bound. Use your left and right arrows. I'm going to arrow to the left, and I'm going to hit enter. Right down. I'm going to arrow to the right. I'm going to hit enter. And then, your guess, you can just go back to that area. Does your answer match my answer? X is approximately... I have two decimal places on this particular problem, so negative 2.36. Can you find the other one? Find the other one. I'm going to write a few tips over here to, as reminders while you guys are doing that.
Okay, first of all, did you get a second answer over here? What'd you guys get? 5.61? Sounds about right to me. Okay, your answer, your second answer should match my answer. Okay, off to the right here, I just kind of wrote, because there's not really work to show on these, is there? Other than make it equal to zero, there's not work to show. So this is just kind of a reminder. We made our equation equal to zero, and then we graphed it. So we graphed y equals whatever your equation is. We're looking for the x-intercepts. So we used our calc menu, which is second trace, and then we went to zero, or as in zeros. Okay, I think it just says zero there. Okay. You ready to try B? Yay, yay. Yes. Is it count there cooperating is the question, right? Yes. Okay. And by all means, guys, let me help with it. You know, when the calculator doesn't cooperate, don't just say, oh, I don't, you know, this calculator doesn't work. Yes, it does. It just, there's all these little ins and outs of them. Okay, so B, what do we have to do on B? Make it equal to zero. And if we want to move everything to the left side, how are we going to do that? We're going to subtract. What are we going to subtract? Yeah. We're going to subtract x and the negative 1, and we're going to subtract 2x. They're just individual terms, so we're going to subtract each of them. Don't try and do anything with them. Don't try and manipulate them. Okay? You're wasting your time and making the problem harder than what it is. So I'm going to subtract x and the negative first and 2x. So on my left, I already have x plus 2 to negative 1, and now we're going to subtract x to the negative 1, and now I'm going to subtract 2x. And now my equation is equal to 0. Type that in as is, folks. Don't, don't try and get fancy like, oh, I'm going to collect these like terms. There's nothing there you can put together. So we're just going to graph what you see. We're going to graph y equals x plus 2 to the negative 1 minus x to the negative 1 minus 2x. And we're going to find us some answers, right? Oh, this is that one. Okay, you guys with, okay with typing this in? Parentheses, x plus 2, parentheses. Remember, your power is the caret over there. Raise the negative 1 minus x to the negative 1 minus 2x. Right? Okay, does your graph look like my graph? Yeah. It is kind of a crazy graph, isn't it? I see people looking over other people's shoulders to see, okay, is this what it's supposed to look like? It is. There's a couple of vertical asymptotes happening there. Um, we'll learn about that in lesson 1.2, but there's a vertical asymptote happening at x equals negative 2 and at x equals 0. And that's what's causing the graph to do the crazy stuff. Now, all I care about are the x-intercepts. How many? Just one, yes? Find it. Now, it always starts you on the y-axis, so you just have to arrow left until you get over to that curve. Okay, you'll get there eventually. What'd you get? I have 2.20 is at 5, so I have mine written as negative 2.21. Yeah. 
You getting the feel for the calculators? Because I do feel like half of this lesson, this part of the lesson is just tips and tricks in the calculators. Now, there's two more. And you'll notice it's seeing grapher failure and not seeing hidden behavior. So there's a few tricks for these next two. As we look at these next two, notice they're already y equals, aren't they? Go ahead and graph them. Or go ahead and graph one of them if you're ready. So in this one, I'm going to graph the equation. Y equals 3 minus 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1. You guys remember how to do your fraction bar? Three minus, I like, a lot of you guys use the link right next to it, right? It's right there on that button to the right of alpha. I always have to use alpha F2. Nope, alpha F1. One over the square root, x squared minus one. Your graph look like my graph. That's good news, right? Okay. Now, have you have you tried to find your zeros? You try it and see what happens. This is where I need everyone practicing the calculators. Okay. When we go to do this, second count number two zero. Notice right now, I'm at zero and y is nothing. That's because my graph doesn't exist at y. If I start arrowing to the left, notice my y doesn't exist, y doesn't exist. Eventually when your y starts existing, that's when your cursor starts existing, doesn't it? Okay. There's your left bound. For right bound, you have to get past that little end point right there. And as long as you're to the right of it, Notice why it doesn't exist, but that's okay because it can still work as a right bound. Okay? You can hit enter again. Does your answer match my answer? I think I have this one to three decimal places. Don't ask me why I had three on this one and not on the others. I just did. I don't have a good answer there. Now, a comment here, folks. Everyone pause for a moment and look at my calculator with me. What is this y supposed to be? This is y is supposed to be zero, yes? And most of the time it is zero. What is this, what is this number? What does this e mean? Yeah, this is scientific notation. So think with me. This is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 12. What does that negative 12 exponent mean the decimal to do? Goes to the left 12 places, right? So if this is going to the left 12 places, we're now at point 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2. Is that number pretty darn close to 0? That's very, very close to 0. I, what I need you to recognize, folks, the calculator does this sometimes. This is another way for the calculator to say zero. It's kind of part of the calculator failure, so to speak. But this number is equivalent to zero in the calculator brain. Okay, so just realize that. Don't try and tell me this is some other number. It is zero. Okay, and I just lost it. Dang it. Okay. You found that one, right? Did you find your other one? My left bound can be anywhere before I get to it. Right bound is after I pass it. And notice this one is positive. So I'm going to have solutions of positive and negative 1.054. So I took the shortcut. I wrote minus plus or minus 1.054. Okay.
start graphing the last one if you haven't. Seems easy enough. However, I want to make sure we get it right. Okay, hit trace. You're not actually on the graph. That's what's going on. Yeah, because you're, yeah, you can't get to it. That's why you have to use yeah, the second cow to get there. Yeah, because you got off of the graph. Okay, you making progress on this one? Okay. What'd you get? Okay. Did you get the negative nine to the left? Okay, right now it pops you on the y axis. Watch your x values. We can tell it's over around negative 9, yes? My cursor is way up high. My cursor right now is at 379, you know, and rises. So eventually, if you go far enough to the left, it looks like it's around negative 9. So I want my left bound to be past negative 9. Notice now my y values are negative, so I can hit enter. If I go right now, I want to get to where my y values are positive, which they are, so I can hit enter. Dang it, I can't. I I hit the wrong button. What did I just do? Okay, quit. Oh, so left bound. Okay, there we go. There's my left bound. Now, as I arrow to the right, I'm going up. My y values are positive now. Notice with a little play, you do eventually end up at negative 9. <laughs> what else did you find? You're not, and that's, you won't necessarily be able to see the cursor, but right there, you are, if you count, this looks like about negative 9, right? You have gone past it, you're at negative 10, so you just go ahead and hit that for your left hand. Now, when you arrow to the right, watch for your y value to become positive, because that will tell you you have passed up across the axis. Does that make sense? And now hit enter. Okay. Well, use that y value to help you because it does get confusing. Yes, yeah, you should be past it. And you can just hit enter again. Yes. Okay, curiosity, what have we gotten next? 5.1? Did everyone get 5.1? What? Five? Why are we getting different answers? Huh? Something ain't right. How about, let's talk about, um, is it paused? Which one are you trying to find? 
Probably because you've got your screen off center and it's not on the screen anymore. So, right, so you won't find it if your screen, since it's not showing on the screen, it won't find it. So you need to resume your screen so that you're on the screen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Now, although you might pause and just wait for a moment. Okay, guys. Let's talk about how many total answers are there to this problem? Three. Three. Now, here's my clue there's three. What's the highest exponent in this problem? Three. Now, that doesn't guarantee there's three real visible roots, but it does tell me that there are three roots, and they could all be visible. What's going on with this little parabola piece? What's it doing? It's crossing. It's not just touching. It's going down and below. Now, here's the deal. That's going to be really difficult to find your two answers, isn't it? Okay. Angela happened on one. Tofa I know happened on the other. I know there were mixed responses here, right? Here's my suggestion. We need to zoom in to see this piece of the graph. So follow along, please. I'm on my regular screen. I'm going to pick Zoom. I'm going to pick Zoom in. And I'm going to hit Enter. Now remember, it hasn't zoomed in yet, has it? Don't hit Enter again yet. Move your cursor to where you want it to zoom in. So what do I want to focus my zooming in on? That little bottom of the parabola piece, yes? So now if I hit Enter, once I get over there, well, we're getting closer to be able to tell. Maybe you can see it goes below, but not quite. Zoom in again then. So if I go to zoom and zoom in, again, make sure your cursor is in the vicinity of the bottom of the parabola. Hit enter. Now can you tell it goes below? I feel more confident that, oh, there are going to be two answers. And I also feel confident that I could find them. So now if I go to second count and zero, okay, left bound. I can pause my right, I can put my right bound in between them. There's my answer of five. And I can redo this. And left bound, right bound. And there's my answer of 5.1. So you do indeed get three answers. This is where it comes down to be careful, right? Watch for those possible hidden answers. Okay, don't be afraid to zoom in on your calculator. Learn how to use your calculator is what it comes down to. Okay. Um, a random piece of information. So if I do a zoom six and I go back, oops, um, I won't do it on this graph because it's hard to see, but let me... Let me try turning on this graph. When you graph something, you have the ability to pause your graph as it's graphing. And I say this because people sometimes accidentally pause their graphs, which is what happened this morning. So if I hit graph, notice my graph just stops there. You'll also notice my little spinny circle here turned from yellow to white. That's because I hit the enter button while it was graphing. If I hit enter again, it unpauses. It'll keep, I can unpause and pause my graph as it's graphing. Not that we really have a purpose for that, but here's what happens. You sometimes accidentally do that. You think your calculator's frozen. It's not really frozen, you just pause it. So um, the little turning wheel up there is normal yellow when it's graphing. When you pause it, it turns white, I believe. Something like that. So just something to watch out for. Okay. I think that's all I got. Okay, you have some in homework. They're like what we did yesterday, where it's just answering questions. Actually, what we did on Friday, where it's answering questions. You have some that you might need to turn your stack plots back on and put those numbers into the list. You have some that are solving algebraically. If it says solve algebraically, I'm thinking factoring or quadratic formula show your work. You have some that say solve graphically. Do I need much work when it says solve graphically? 
Not really. Just maybe if you have to make it y equals. Okay? So, 11, 12, 14, 20, 21, 23, 30 to 36 evens, 40 to 46 evens, and don't forget 51. You have a little bit of work time. Use it. Do tomorrow.